Hello, welcome to another Monday Night Movie Night. I'm Larissa Davis. I'm an immigration attorney and I like to watch movies, all kinds of movies, but I especially want to focus on this channel on movies that tell stories about immigrants. And so I like to uh, do these to review different movies and talk about the stories that they tell um, about different groups of immigrants, different eras. And so um, each Monday night I've been doing this. However, um, if you're somebody who watches my channel or you subscribe, you might have noticed that I have not been uh, posting videos more recently and that's just um, due to workload and other commitments that I have and um, tr and and, and uh, travel. So that said, I've made a decision with this uh, portion of the videos that I post on my YouTube uh, dedicated to movies and that is instead of doing a Monday night movie night every Monday night, I will do it monthly. So uh, I think the first Monday of every month, I'll start doing them um, coming up after after this one. So this will be the last one until the first week of, of December. Well, that's next week, but um, that's when I'll start doing that instead of doing it every Monday night, every week, I'll do it every month. So we'll do a monthly Monday night movie night. All right, so tonight's movie is a movie that came out in 1993, and it's based on a book, The Joy Luck Club by Amy Tan. I actually have had this book for a while and I have not read it, but I've watched the movie two or three times now over the years since I was a kid when it had first come out in 1993. And it is such a powerful movie and it has a really unique way of telling stories about um, Chinese Americans and specifically mothers and daughters. So in the movie, we have four Chinese American women and their four immigrant Chinese mothers. And so it is a real interesting way of, of uh, telling the story of these immigrants in sort of little, um, we have a visitor today. Uh, little, I, I guess, vignettes of each mother and daughter, their relationship, and then also the history behind the immigrant mothers and how they left China, when they left China, why they left China, and their own personal stories, which kind of come to light throughout the, the telling of stories um, in this movie where they, uh, the characters are either sitting together eating or they're playing mahjong, uh, tile game. And um, it's very, uh, it can be very tense. It's rated R and there's a lot of really uh, deep issues and, and tension and the emotions that, that are being shown on the screen through these characters and their stories is, is really strong. So I encourage you to watch it if you haven't seen it, if you have, and it's been a while, watch it again. And I also wanna ask for those of you who've actually read the book, um, I have a lot of books and I intend to read them and then I, I end up not reading them as quickly or as soon as I want to. And so I really want to read the book because I watched the movie tonight. I haven't seen it in a long time. It's, a, it's amazing how it's told. So many characters all packed in, yet it really flows well. And so if you've read the book, Tell me what, what you think. In all of the times I've ever read a book and watched a movie, the book is always better. It always is better. And so as good as the movie is, I'm assuming that the book's even better. Um, something interesting too about the book, Amy Tan never set out to be a writer. And uh, the way she came about with, with this um, was after she had taken a class. And um, interestingly enough, she had told these sort of different stories, um, sh different short stories, and then it came together as one big whole story. And even though once it was published and it was a huge hit, I think, um, yeah, nine months on the New York Times bestseller list. I mean, it, it did incredibly well. Despite all that success with the book, they had a really hard time trying to get the movie made. And the director, Wayne Wang, um, finally was able to, to get it, um, made, but they got turned down a lot. And so with that, I want to say, um, this is probably the first or one of the first major 
motion pictures to tell um, Asian immigrant stories or, or even just have Asians at the at the forefront of of a movie um, as the main characters and the rich Chinese um, cultural history um, and everything that comes to life in these stories is really significant and and it's interesting that um, we see a lot of that I think now today in 2022 there's different shows and and movies and actors and comedians that that are Asian but I don't think that um, you know this is something that if, if you remember it wasn't something that you saw a lot of and so this was a really big deal um, to to uh, the Asian community okay so to get into it I I kind of want to just cover the the four mother-daughter relationships um, and really these experiences as they come to life so it starts off with this um, Chinese American June and her mother dies and her mother has these best friends that she met at church and she plays mahjong with them and so June gets invited to play with them she calls them all auntie because they're like aunties to her and she gets to learn a lot about her mother and her mother's past and why she left China because all of the women that her mother became friends with also left China around the same time, um, I think pre-1949 uh, communist China. And so they each have their own stories. So we first have Lindo and Waverly and they are smart, they are witty, they are cunning, they are cutting. Um, because there's this very like a uh, tough love relationship dynamic between the two of them and um, if you are a mother or a daughter I am both um, there's probably uh, a lot of uh, conversations or experiences that you might empathize with or relate to I know I did with all four of these sets of, of mother-daughter relationships and sometimes it's hard to watch. It's it's um, really powerful the way that these women uh, express themselves to one another. And um, I I I I think that it was um, it was just really there's a lot of tension. There was a lot of heaviness in a lot of these scenes. So okay, Lindo and Waverly and Waverly kind of feels like she has to be this perfectionist and that she's like not good enough for her mother. And her mother has a really interesting story about how intelligent she was at a very young age to get out of an arranged marriage. And I love her character. She kind of reminds me of my grandmother in some ways. And um, she could be that passive aggressive um, person who can be really cold. And, and so her daughter Waverly and her um, differ a lot too in the fact that Waverly very much is that Chinese American um, she's a successful woman and she was, you know, born and raised in the USA, whereas Lindo came from China and um, and had to deal with being set up in this marriage at a very young age. I think when she was like two years old, they were already deciding who she was going to marry. And then she had to figure out how to get out of that. And she did. And um, so she's very smart in the way that she did that. And her daughter's very smart, too. Okay, so the next mother-daughter um, duo is Ying Ying and Lena. And so Ying Ying falls for the playboy, the guy who's so smooth. Um, you know, he's smooth like that for a reason because he's talking to, to all the women like that. And so she unfortunately learns or comes to the realization uh, what kind of man she married after. She's already married to him and they've, and they've had a baby. And um, she has to figure out how to get away from him. And the scenes with the babies in this movie, oh my goodness, I can hardly watch um, because of what happens with her baby, of course, but then also later on with the twins. Um, and if you've seen it, you know what I'm talking about. But um, her daughter, so Ying Ying is dealing with this cheating husband, and then her daughter goes on to marry uh, a man who she's heavily dependent on. And so it's it's sort of interesting how they these dynamics play out in the younger generation when it comes to marriage and relationships. Okay, the next uh, mother-daughter, Anne May and Rose. So Anne May um, gets 
into this um, rich family and the way that she gets into it isn't isn't really the best of circumstances and it's uh interesting how later in the movie the daughter rose is almost like embodying her grandmother who she never knew in china um when she faces this uh, situation with with her husband who she's in the at the time in the process of divorcing and he's a very wealthy man and um, she has to deal with the fact that she doesn't communicate her needs. And, and um, so that's the third mother-daughter relationship um, dynamic. Now, June, who is the main uh, daughter that the story sort of begins with when she's meeting with the, the three aunties, the three best friends of her mother, um, her mother, when she died, um, we learn about their relationship because the story, like with all of them, flashes back and forth to the past when, when the girls were young and their relationship with their mother growing up. And then it also flashes back to China when the mothers were young themselves and, and living there. And so there's a lot of, first of all, a lot of actresses involved. So they've got someone playing the child and then the adult and then the grandmother or auntie and and the American, the Chinese American daughter when she's young and then older. So I think they had like 20 actresses or something and they all um, are highly skilled and, and amazing in this, throughout this whole movie. Sometimes this is in TV shows too. I notice main characters might be fantastic, excellent, highly skilled, experienced actors or actresses. And then they get side you know, supporting, supporting roles and they're not always the best or they're, you could tell there's, a, there's a gap in the skill level, but not here. I think everyone in this whole, throughout the whole film was, was really, um, incredible. And they had a lot of great, uh, ways of, of changing the scenes from back in China, 1949 to sitting at, at a table in San Francisco in, you know, the early nineties and how, it felt very um, just intimate and close, like you're really there at the table with them while they're eating or while they're, you know, talking or playing a game. There's a lot of very intense, intimate type scenes um, happening throughout this film. And so, okay, June. So I wanted to talk about how June doesn't really know her mother and her mother's history and the fact that she actually has two half sisters who are twins who were who were left in China and and it, as it turns out lived and the terrible experiences her mother had to endure to keep them safe and and try to save her own life in fleeing from you know a communist uh, country during uh, a terrible time in history and so she through this storytelling with the 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 women that were her mother's best friends gets to learn all of this a after her mother's death. And so um, it's interesting how there's a lot of lack of communication between mothers and the daughters, and that's a source of conflict, and also a lot of, a, a lot of misunderstandings, and that causes so much pain. And so I think the way that the story is woven uh, to show you know the past and the present past China, you know, 1949 China, the, the mothers to, you know, sometime probably in, I guess, the 70s when these these young Chinese American uh, daughters were, were young and they were children to this, what's supposed to be the present time in the 90s, there's always this misunderstanding. The, the daughter doesn't think she's good enough or the mother doesn't express her love for her child and 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 there can be a lot of confusion between the generations, especially when it comes to female relationships between mothers and daughters. Um, let me know what you think if if you felt you know empathy or you could identify with these because I kind of feel like all in all four of those relationships there were definitely things I couldn't ident identify with and sympathize with um, the characters as as a daughter but also as a mother. And so this whole story is about the mother-daughter relationship, but it's also very much about um, Chinese history and a Chinese-American history and, um, and, and the way that 
these women came from China, what they were fleeing from. I handle a lot of asylum cases where people are being persecuted and they flee and come to the United States because of that persecution and their fear of, of future persecution. And so these mothers uh, fled for those, those same kind of reasons and had to go through that process to save their lives or to give their, their daughters life um, as we see in, in some of the situations. And it's really heart-wrenching in, in some of these scenes, what the sacrifice of the mother. Um, and that that was really some powerful um, emotional scenes to see those bonds and how each mother uh, made certain decisions at the time that they did in order to protect their daughter or to give their daughter a shot at life or a better life. And, um, and even actually the grandmothers, the grandmothers that were the mothers, mothers in, in China and what they did. And um, I would be interested to know, you know from anyone watching that is an immigrant, you know, what, what kind of things were you maybe surprised to learn about your own um, family that maybe you didn't realize if you are a first generation American of, of immigrant parents? because um, I, I, through my practice, have learned a lot of times people aren't going to talk about these experiences unless they, unless they have to. And sometimes at an asylum interview with a U.S. Uh, citizen and immigration services officer is one of the first times or only times they're talking about some of these difficult circumstances that they lived in to, to um, get it, or that they wanted to get out of to get to America. Okay, so something a little bit on the lighter note here. I wanna talk about some of the cross-cultural confusion, especially as it relates to Waverly and her American boyfriend, he's a white man. And she had apparently previously married a Chinese man, I guess to, I got, I got from the story, at least in the movie, that it was to really, you know, appease her mother. And um, that didn't work out, she got divorced, but she's dating this, uh, man, she really likes him, her boyfriend, and she brings him to dinner with the family. I think it's the mother's birthday. And so there's a few things that he does that were unacceptable in their culture and in their family when it comes to how you eat at the table, how you serve yourself, or how you drink the alcohol, and um, giving compliments to the cook. And he did not follow those things and so there was confusion there and he had no ill will or you know malicious intent with the way that he handled himself but there was just this complete obliviousness on customs and what is expected within the culture and so um, I know each culture has certain things that are considered disrespectful or rude or um, just certain mannerisms or things that you do when you are together, whether it's eating, whether you're meeting for the first time um, in a business meeting maybe. And so if you've had those kind of cultural confusion, cross-cultural confusions with friends of yours or a boyfriend or girlfriend or, or whatever, significant other, and, and you've had any kind of awkward or funny situations like that, um, share them in the comments below, please. All right, so I think those are all the things I really wanted to talk about. There's obviously a lot packed into each of these four complex mother-daughter relationships and the immigrant history um, I could go into, but I really just wanted to stick to those those points and also find out who, who of you have read the book because I'm about to start reading it after watching that movie again and um, really um, dig into it. There's so much, um, there's the verbal abuse, there's the infidelity, there's the, um, expectations of, of, um, performance and pride in, in who you are and your family and, and what you represent as the, as the American child that we see in the daughters. And there's just, um, so many things happening within these relationships, there's different layers. And I love how it 
it flowed in the movie. So I'm really excited to, to read this book and um, just, yeah, get into it. So, all right. Well, thank you for watching and thank you to my subscribers. I have now hit over 100 subscribers on YouTube. If you would like to see more uh, reviews like this on Monday Night Movie Nights, please let me know what you think or if there are certain movies that you want me to review. Um, a lot of the movies I review on this channel I have seen already before I decide to even do um, a video, but some of them I've, I'm, I just find and it's the first time I've watched them. So I am open to ideas. I already know what we're going to be discussing next week for December, and then that will be it for the year until the first week of January. All right. Thank you for watching.